I got something special by Snail Mail. The 2019 National Mahjong League card. I did a comparison with last year's card and I have some statistics and findings that I want to share. My hope is that the information I share will ease any angst that you have playing with a new card. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. Without further ado, let's get to the presentation. For this project, I took the 2019 card and the 2018 card and did a side-by-side -side comparison. I basically did a count of hands in four steps. The first step was to do an analysis by category and here are my results. You can see the category on the left and then a delta which is the difference between the two years. We have two columns for this year, the count of hands and then the percentage on the card and then the same for last year and at the, bo at the bottom we have a total. So here you can see that last year we had 65 hands, this year 66. The reason the number is higher than last year is because I counted the variations as separate hands. So for example, if there's an or where you can do a one suit hand or a two suit or multi suit hand, that's two hands, not one. And if there is an option to do little numbers versus big numbers, two different hands. So this card is going to have some higher counts, but I think it'll all be relative. Here, what I found interesting is that odds is the biggest category. Last year, 12 hands. This year, 11. 17% of the hands on the card are in the odds category, followed by consecutive run. I really thought consecutive run was the biggest category. I just never really took the time to count the hands before. I do believe that consecutive run is the most flexible category on the card, but since odds has two more hands, there may be some additional flexibility there that I really wasn't aware of or didn't really pay much attention to. The next category is wins and dragons, then singles and pairs, three, six, nine, followed by evens, addition, the year, quince, and like numbers. This year, we only have two hands for like numbers but I have a lot more to share about like numbers. The next step was an analysis by attribute. These are the attributes that I focused on. To me, these are the strongest in regards to playing the game, in my opinion. And I have this list in descending order by this year's count. So on the left, we have the number of hands with whatever attribute I have listed here. And then the delta, which is the difference between last year and this year. So last, last year, for number of hands with Pungs, Kongs, and Quints, we had 58 hands, 89%. This year, 59, just one more. So let's state at 89%, which is actually really significant. 89% of the hands have Pungs, Kongs, and Quints. The next highest count, number of hands in mixed suits, including dragons. Last year, 37 hands, 57%. This year, 43 hands, a jump. 65% of the hands are in mixed suits, with or without dragons. And I think that's surprising. Six more hands in mixed suits. The next highest count is number of hands with flowers, any combination of flowers. Last year, 34 hands. This year, 30. Four less. 45% of the hands on the card use flowers. The next highest count is number of hands with like numbers. So wherever there's a repeat of the same number, whether it's well, it's going to be mixed suits. 
So I counted those. Last year we had 19 hands, 29%. This year we have 25, 38%. So that's an increase. More like number potential throughout the card. The next highest count is number of hands in one suit, including dragons, but excluding hands with all wins because all wins are always one suit. So I didn't want to skew the numbers. So I just left that out. For this count by this particular attribute, last year, 26 hands at 40%. This year, we have a decrease, 21 hands, 32%. So there are fewer one suit hands with or without dragons this year. The next count in descending order is the number of hands with dragons. Last year we had 22 hands, 34%. This year, 20 hands at 30%. So that's a drop of two points. The next count, number of concealed hands. Last year, 14, 22%. This year, 15, 23%, nominal change. The next count, number of hands with pairs of flowers. Last year, we had 20, 31%. This year, 15, another dip, 23%. The next count, number of hands that were carried over. I counted 10 for both years, so that stayed the same. Number of hands with wins. This also stayed the same. 10. 10 last year, 10 this year. But what I found interesting is the comparison between wins and dragons. There are four wins and there are 10 hands. 15% of the card with hands with wins in it. For dragons, though, there are only three dragons. But... There are 20 hands, 30% of the card have dragons. I think that's an interesting comparison. The next count, number of hands with singles and pairs only. This was kind of an easy count, seven last year, eight this year. We have an extra singles and pair hand, an option. So the next attribute, number of hands with pungs of flowers. Last year we had five. This year we have only three. So that's another dip in regards to flowers. Now last year we had double pungs of flowers. Four hands last year. This year we don't have any double pungs of flowers. So that's another dip in regards to flowers on the card. The next step in the analysis is by what I call recurring or prevalent block conventions. That is basically the shape of a hand or the sets. For example, the very first one here, you can see pair, pung, kong, pung, pair. We call that a pyramid because it goes up and down. That shape is up and down. Pair is little followed by a pung then a kong is bigger, then a, a pung, which is smaller, and then a pair again. So small, medium, large, medium, small. That's why it's called a pyramid. So this is one of two prevalent blocks on the card this year. Last year, there were no pyramids. Five this year, 8%. The next convention is pung kong, pung kong. Five last year, five this year at 8%. After that, we have pair, 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 kong, kong, 3%, no change, and so on. You can see that the numbers go down. We have this in descending order. When I did this count, I was counting recurring and prevalent. I did, I did count them all, but there are many, and there are a lot of onesie twosies. So I took the top 5% in this particular example. We can go deeper. If you're interested, let me know and I'll give you the data. But I wanted to see just the bigger numbers, the, the prevalent patterns that are on the card. And 
there are two, the pyramid and Pung Kong Pung Kong. So when you're playing the game, watch your conventions. And we're gonna talk a little more about conventions later. In this count, I did not count addition hands because that's kind of a special category with its own convention. And so is the year in some instances. This was for recurring and prevalent blocks at 5% or greater, because otherwise we're gonna see a bunch of ones and twos and you won't even be able to read it. But trust me, there are a lot of them. There are a lot of conventions on this card. But the prevalent ones are the pyramid and Pung Kong Pung Kong for this year. The next step was an analysis by value. So I, I actually counted by value and then I did a descending sort in the count. So the most hands are the easiest, 41 hands this year, last year, 39. So last year we had 60%, this year 62% of the hands are 25 points. So if you're a beginner, I think you should feel pretty good about that. Let's play the 25 point hands until you're really comfortable with the game and then maybe delve into the higher point hands when you're ready. There are a lot of hands to choose from, 41. The next highest count is the concealed or three pair hands. This is a 30 point hand. Last year we had 15 for 23%, this year 10. 15%, so there's a dip there. The next highest count was in the singles and pairs category, we have eight this year, six last year. So 12% of the card has singles and pairs. That's with the 50 point value. Next we have quince at 45 points and there are three. Then we have the concealed with singles or a pair with 35 and more, we have only two of those this year. Then we have quince at 40, we have one, singles and pairs at 75, we have one. And then last year, there was a single and pair at 60 and the, the card had one hand at 60. So you can see here that the easiest hands on the card are prevalent, 62%. And then after that, the 30 point, and then singles and pairs and so on. Now I'm gonna share my findings with you. I don't know if you noticed, but there was a parenthetical on some of those hands or those, those statistics. I think it was zero, one through six. And so I'll explain those here. The first one was that the highest percentage of hands is in the odds category at 17% as I shared. So we have more options in odds, but it's still not as flexible as consecutive run, in my opinion. But I think that those additional options are good. The next note is that the highest percentage of hands with Pungs, Kongs, and Quints, 89%. So I really believe in building around multiples. 89% of the hands on the card are big multiples, Pungs, Kongs, and Quints. So if you have Pungs, Kongs, and Quints, build around them, you have a lot of options, 89% of the card. The next note was the drop in the percentage of flowers in the hands, seven points. I really believe that flowers should be easier to get this year. I had the hardest time getting flowers last year, and I'm pretty sure it was because of the double Pungs. And there were other Pung, flower hands as well. And then of course the pair hands are hands with pairs of flowers. And I, there was just significantly more hands with flowers last year and the double pungs, I think made it really difficult to get flowers, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem as much this year, we'll see. The next finding is, I noticed an increase in percentage of like numbers, 38%. Like numbers therefore is going to have a higher risk with passing in the Charleston. I see a lot of like numbers passed in my sphere of influence. And because there is an increased percentage of like numbers throughout the card, that's going to be risky. 
38% of the hands have like numbers. Then there's a comparatively higher number of dragons, 30% in hands than wins at 15%. All dragons, I believe, are valuable. If you're going to pass dragons, pass one at a time, if at all. I try to use them if I can, but if I can't use them, I try to pass one at a time. And finally, last year we had a concealed hand with singles. It was a convention of Pung, single, Pung, single, or no, no, Pung, yes, Pung, single, Pung, Pung, single, Pung. It was the last hand under 369. That was a 30 point hand. That convention is used this year again, but this year it's 35 points. There's only one hand with that convention and that's in the odd category, the concealed hand in odds. And even though it's the same convention, they increase the value of that hand. So I found that interesting. I'm gonna track that, see what they do next year. The next finding that I had on here, and I spoke to it a little bit, is that this is kind of a variety card. There are so many conventions on this card. You saw those numbers, 8%, 8%, 5%, 6%, 4, 3. The numbers of repeating, recurring, pre and prevalent blocks have really small numbers. So the conventions used throughout the card are varied. This is going to be a variety card. And the insight that I gain from that is when I go to claim a discard for my first exposure, I'm going to double check the convention for the hand I'm playing or whatever options I'm considering because there are so many variables, so many variations, I should say, that it is going to take a while to memorize all those conventions. If you want to see the list of all the different conventions, let me know and I'll send you an email and you can see it's lengthy. The next finding is that there are going to be uh, risky tiles. As every year, there are risky tiles to pass. Year tiles, flowers and dragons, especially the white dragon, because it's a dual tile. It can be used as a dragon or a zero. So those year in and year out are going to be risky tiles to pass. This year, fives are all over this card. Well, I shouldn't say all over because they're not in evens and they're not in 369, but there's a five in every hand of addition and there are fives all over odds. There are going to be fives used in consecutive run as well. And if you think about it, five is in the middle of a sequence. One through nine, five's in the middle. Many of the ranges for consecutive run are one uh, between two and five in a range. So fives are going to be in many of those ranges. So I think fives could be hard to come by. Therefore, I think they may have a greater risk during passing. The next finding that I have is that there are 10 carryover hands and I have them listed here. So Look below the video for all my notes. You can download that if you're interested and study all these yourself. If I missed anything, let me know. This was a real challenging project, let me tell you. Having these cards side by side and counting hands, oh, it was quite a challenge and a lot of fun, actually. So this is what I found for this year's card. These are the carryover hands. And they might be good to study, especially if you're new to the game, because if you played last year, you might be comfortable with these hands and they're on the card this year again. The next finding, I did not come by on my own. I found it at Mahjong That's It Facebook group. There was a big ruckus going on over a couple of hands. So I studied it out myself. And I agreed that these are going to be problematic this year for many people. The first one is the year hand number three. This hand 
has a pair of flowers, two kongs of dragons, and the year tiles, 2019. In the parentheses, it says any two or three suits. So in other words, you can use any two kongs of dragons, any two dragon kongs. I have some examples here. For a two suit option, you could have two flowers, a kong of red dragons, 2019 in dots, and then you can have white dragons with the joker and another white dragon, a kong with the joker in dots. So that's gonna be a two suit option because we have cracks and dots represented. Here's another two suit option, pair of flowers, Kong of Green Dragon, 2019 in cracks, and then a Kong of Red Dragons. It's okay if the 2019 year tiles correspond with a Kong of the Dragons. Any two dragons can be used. It says two or three suits. Here's an example of two suit example, two flowers, white dragons with a joker, 2019 with bams, and then a Kong of green dragons. So that's another two suit option. And then here's the three suit option. We have a pair of flowers, a Kong of green dragons, 2019 and dots, and then a Kong of red dragons, three suits represented, bams, cracks, and dots. So all of these are valid. Just think of it as any two dragons in that case. The next hand that's problematic is consecutive run number five. This one is a pung of flowers, a kong on the card, it shows a one and a two, and then a pung of the corresponding dragon. In the parentheses, it says any one suit, but it does not speak to the sequence. So that was an omission by the league unintentional, I'm sure. Except for the first hand in the consecutive run category, which is literal, you have to use those numbers. It says in the parentheses, these numbers only. Except for that first hand, every other hand in that category for consecutive run can start with any number in the sequence, as long as it ends at nine. There is no around the world with Mahjong. So the sequence has to end at nine, but, this, but it can start with any number. Now we're going into what I call tandem categories. These are categories that share tiles that allow playability to a decision point. So you can straddle two or even three categories with the same tiles to a point, eventually, you have to make a decision and whittle down from three categories to two, two to one, and then finally down to a hand. So I wanna talk about the strengths that I see with tandem categories for 2019. For the year category, there's a tandem capability to consecutive run using ones and twos, obviously, because ones and twos are consecutive. There's also tandem capability for the year to odds. And that would be using ones and nines, but it's for specific hands, hand number one and hand number seven, because ones and nines are in both of those hands. So it's not as flexible as maybe consecutive run, but it's still playable. The next category would be evens, and we're gonna go category by category through the card. So evens, is tandem with consecutive run. All you have to do is fill in the gaps. Two, four, six, eight, fill in with three, five, seven, nine, maybe. So if you're playing two, four, six, eight, and you start filling in gaps, consider switching to consecutive run. It's a tandem category. You can play both categories to a point. The next category is like numbers. The interesting thing about like numbers, if you remember, that statistic, I believe it was 38% of the hands on the card have like numbers. So like numbers can have tandem categories 
all over the card except for the year and the addition hand. Every other category on the card has like numbers. As long as it's the same number, you can go all over the card. The next category is addition. Addition can tandem with consecutive run using fives and sixes. That's the first hand. Or five, seven can go to odds. Fives and sevens with odds, five, six consecutive run. Really even five, eight could go with consecutive run, but you got a pretty big gap there. Five, we would need six and seven to fill the gap between five and eight. So it's a bit of a stretch. That's why I think fives and sixes for consecutive run and then five, seven for odds. So just keep that in mind if your hand doesn't come in or if your singles or your one, one pair there goes dead, think about the potential for the tandem categories and potentially switch. The next category, middle panel, top category, quints. Quint number one and number three are consecutive. So if you don't get enough jokers, you could switch to consecutive run. Or maybe with quint number three, if your pair goes dead, you could switch per perhaps to something in consecutive run. Also, there's a like number quint, so you can tandem with like numbers. And there's even a like number with dragons. So that dragon hand in quints and the like number hand, really great pair if you don't get enough jokers. The next category is consecutive run. This category is, is, has tandem capability with both evens and three uh, evens and odds. And since you have nine numbers in a range, there is flexibility with three, six, nine, just not as much because three, six, nine only uses three numbers. And there are some gaps between three, six, and nine. So you can see why it would be hard to switch from consecutive run to three, six, nine. But there is some great flexibility between consecutive run to evens or odds. All you have to do is omit tiles. So if you're, for example, playing the very first hand under consecutive run, one, two, three, four, five, and let's say you couldn't get fours, you have a gap of no fours, you could switch to one, three, five, little odds, one, three, five. The next category we have, odds. The tandem categories for odds is going to be the year, and then consecutive run with fillers. So odds with ones and nines and consecutive run with fillers. So let's say you're playing one, three, five, seven, nine, and one suit, the first hand, and you start getting twos and fours. You can switch to consecutive run. The next category, right panel, top category, wins and dragons. Wins and dragons, number four and number five are like number hands. So you can play like numbers, kind of straddle those categories until you have to make a decision. The rest of the hands are not very flexible. They're all winds and dragons. Not a lot of tandem capability there, just like numbers in my opinion. The next category, 369. 369 doesn't have a lot of flexibility because there are only three numbers to work with. So with 369, you can tandem with odds using threes and nines. Finally, we have singles and pairs. The interesting thing about the singles and pairs category is that it has tandem capabilities with every category on the card, except for addition and quince. So <coughs> if you're playing the first hand, news, pairs, with like numbers, you could switch to the wind and dragon category, or you could switch to like numbers. <coughs> Every one of these hands belongs to another category on the card. The second one down, evens. Third one down, odds. Fourth one, consecutive run. Fifth one, three, six, nine. Then consecutive run, and finally, the year. The only two categories not represented in here are the addition hands, because those numbers are so specific, and also quints, and that's because quints use big blocks. 
you know, pungs, kongs, quints, what have you. So it's kind of hard to go from pairs and singles up to a quint. Except for the year that changes every year, these tandem categories are just about consistent from year to year. There may be some changes depending on the combinations on the card. If you have any attributes that you think should be added to my analysis for next year, make a comment below and describe the attribute or send me an email so that I could add it to next year. If you see any conventions that I missed or that are more prevalent or that you would be interested in tracking, let me know. Put a comment below or send me an email. If you identify any findings that I missed, put it in the comment section below or send me an email. If you see any tandem categories, any strengths between categories, I would love to hear about it. So put a comment in the comment section below or send me an email. And if you use the convention here, NMJL underscore attributes, I can search for it and get flagged. This concludes my analysis of the National Mahjong League 2019 card. If you have any questions, write them in the comment section below or send me an email. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, click subscribe, then click that little gray bell. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.